Alright, what's up everybody? I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys love and hip hop Hollywood, so this should get me caught up. <laughs> um yeah, this should really get me caught up. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock these out. I should probably have a couple hours of a break, hopefully, and then you guys will get uh I think tonight's the season finale. That just shows you how fucking far back I am. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Black Ink Crew comes out tonight too, so you guys can get all this shit tonight. Alright. All right, so <clears throat> uh, this is uh, season two, episode eight, and um, <clears throat> I'm gonna skip over some shit, move past shit, talk about shit, this shit, that shit. You you feel what I'm about to do? So Amber with her family. Long story short, you know she trying to relive her motherfucking high school days, though. You know the lack thereof. You know pigtails, all that shit. I don't know what the fuck she doing, but uh, this 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 scene is a fucking reenactment. You know, it's like they're traveling back in time to like capture that fucking moment, but. She wants to talk to Miles to finally get, you know, the information from him, this, that, and the third. And he pretty much tells her that he has been with Milan. She won't know what that means. He break it down to her, what the fuck that mean. Now she wants to go talk to Milan because let her tell it. You know, uh, there's three sides to the story. There's Mil uh, Milan's side. There's my side. Then there's truth. Uh, no, bitch. There's my side. Milan's side. Then the truth is somewhere in the fucking middle. But whatever. Uh, Monique's Tierra, all I'm gonna say is this uh, fucking Tierra wants lipo. She wanna lose 25 pounds, but she don't wanna work out. Okay, I don't know how the fuck we gonna suck the fat out of her face looking like a muffin chipmunk, but I digress. Now, what I will say, I did not like how they were painting Monice to be an absentee mother. Here's why I say that. If you guys really think about it, yeah, we have not heard much about Cameron this whole entire time, right? Outside of Fizz letting his uh, appetizer of the motherfucking week meet with his motherfucking child and be around his motherfucking child, but don't nobody want to talk about that. That he letting these random ass bitches, these random ass hoes, and if that's what she is, it is, and if that ain't what she is, then it is what it is. I'm sorry, letting these uh, princesses in training, that's what I'm going to say. Letting these princesses in training, the motherfuckers that don't know they have a motherfucking crown, spreading their legs all the way to the motherfucking moon and shit, legs to the moon on that ass. Letting these individuals see his motherfucking children. Because we'll sit here and beat a woman up for it, but we're not going to beat him up for it. And if you really think about it, Moniz, I think she strategically has made it her point to not show Cameron. And let, like not let that be the focal point. If y'all haven't noticed, I am fucking Team Moniz over here. But again, I'm going to tear it down when I got to. I'm going to build her when I need to. You feel what I'm saying? But by the looks of it, that wasn't going to be her storyline. And apparently that wasn't going to be Fizz's either. But apparently since, uh, you know, his relationship with Kamaya has fizzled out. And uh, ain't shit really popping between him and uh, Nikki. I could be wrong because I'm episodes behind, of course. And now I want to sit here and revisit the whole, you know, absentee mother thing. And I did not like how they fucking painted that shit. Whether, like I said, apparently it is the truth. Apparently. But I didn't like how that shit was painted. And I think there was so much more that we didn't understand. I mean, the facts are the facts. She didn't come see her fucking son. Got it. I just did not like how fucking Mon did that shit. I don't. I don't fucking like it. Because I guarantee fucking to you, that shit was done. Chap lips ain't sexy, y'all. Just saying. But if that shit happened to a dude and they're painting him as an FC fucking father, then what? You feel what I'm saying? Moving the fuck on. So Hazel has his ATV accident. So Tierra, Milan, and Nikki are there. Now, here's what I'm going to say. Initially, she tugged at my damn heartstrings. I was like, I was in the field when I watched it. I'm just delayed giving y'all that. But I was like, oh, and then mm, reality fucking set in. I had, to do, I had to do one of those like, if you don't wake the fuck up, uh-uh, uh-uh, don't, don't fall for the trap now. Don't fall for that trap, bitch. You know, I had to sit here and talk to myself like, look, ho, we ain't finna fall for this trap. And then I'm having to look back like, look, bitch, you're not finna sit here and be do like, you know, internal conversations. The shit is real around him. And, you know, certain shit don't make sense. Now, when you watch it just one time and you're not really thinking about the shit, you get wrapped in, putting on the emotional heartstrings. But, bitch, you in Dubai. You mean to tell me couldn't nobody fucking save your nose over there? And then, you know... All that's really fucked up is this right here and like right there. You mean to tell me you had this accident and nothing else on your body is hurt, injured, bruised, or nothing? I should have pulled my ass on motherfucking drag because this shit. 
Okay, anyways, so her nose had to be saved, so they moved, they sent her back to uh, the States. I'm about to say Chicago, but we not claim her. Sent her back to the States, 48 hours saving, they saved her nose. The people that were there with her showed her no fucking compassion. And if that's true, you might want to, you know, reevaluate who the fuck you surround yourself with. But again, I'm not phased. Yeah, moving the fuck on. So now we got Marlon Rich now. We all go agree, disagree. On some real shit, I'm gonna let y'all know right now. I'm not fucking feeling Marla again. Yes, I am fucking Team Moniz. I will always be Team Moniz. Hey, boo. Yeah, I will always be Team Moniz. You feel what I'm saying? And I have my reasons why. Okay, but you know, all right. So they talk. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they're around the same age. You know, they should be friends and whatnot. And, you know, Marla, you know, was pretty much telling him, like, you know, I don't know if I should have been protecting you for her or her for you. Like, why would you say that to somebody? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's almost like she's trying to sit here and sabotage uh, her daughter's relationship. You feel what I'm saying? <clears throat> and she pretty much says that what happened with the whole camera thing is uh, Monisa was mad at Fizz. Fizz shows up. She's overly angry. The cops arrive. They can see that she is the aggressor. And it was because of that that <clears throat> they took camera from her and gave the child to uh, Fizz. <clears throat> I do feel there is some validity there, but it's still so fucking vague. There is more to this fucking story, <clears throat> and I'm hoping on the reunion, if because they're going to talk about Moni's being a fucking absentee mother. So if they're going to talk about this, what I fucking want to happen. I nobody else to fuck on stage. All I want is whoever the fuck the host gonna be, Fizz, Moniz, and Marla, <clears throat> and let all three of their asses tell that night's events. So we, as the viewers, because here's the thing: in the midst of the bullshit, this right here is reality. So let us decipher what truly fucking happened that night. I'm not saying that I believe 100% what fucking Marla said, no, do I believe 100% what Monique said, and hell, we ain't even hearing shit from Fizz, but you know, she just ain't been there. I want to know. All right. Fuck else we got? <clears throat> now we got uh, Teddy Riley and Sylvester and Twitty's Mysteries. So, here's the thing. I'm not finna talk about this dumb bitch. Okay, I'm sorry, I called her a bitch. I'm not finna talk about this young princess in training, the princess without a crown. I'm not finna talk about her. What I will say is this. <clears throat> All I'ma say is this. Trial by fire, child and the fire. All that I'ma say is this. She already know what it is. We didn't told her. All YouTube land told her. Her family and friends and told her. So my thing is this. You know how you sit here and you tell a child, <clears throat> you know, don't get too close to the stove. It's hot. And then they get, and you know, you at, at some point you let them get somewhat cold, but then you pull them back so they get close enough to feel the heat, but you pull their ass back. At this point, they need to just go ahead and let her ass go all the way up to the motherfucking stove, touch that hot motherfucker, and then see just how hot that shit is. Because that's the only way she gonna fucking learn. On some real shit, okay? Sylvester and Tweety's Mysteries need to go ahead and get the fuck on off my motherfucking screen. But that's all the fuck that I'm about to say about her. I think I got some more shit about this hoe, but we'll see. Hazel and uh, Tierra. So Hazel removed and bandages, girl. She acted her ass off. But here's the thing. How dare she sit here and say that? Because she re reveals that she is insecure about her fucking nose. And was hoping they would have gave her a fucking nose job. Why the fuck would you say this shit on camera? But not, but because here's the thing. All you're doing is you're giving people more ammunition to sit here and fuck with you. Now, it's one thing <clears throat> if she, she did shake the fuck out of herself, call her as Michael Jackson cousin or some shit like that. That shit was funny as hell. My thing is if you're going to shade yourself, make fun of yourself, own it. But don't sit here and give people ammunition. You know what I'm saying? It's when you own your shit that you can move past the stuff. I'm going to have to talk about that in a separate video, y'all. Moving the fuck on. Let me see. Brandy and Nick Cannon. So, you know. Trying to take her ass seriously, y'all. Nick just wants her to uh, work with her husband. Because she a part of this fantastic, you know, well-known motherfucking rap duo. Bitch where, bitch why, bitch who, bitch when. I ain't fucking heard of it. You know what I'm saying? My ass been in Korea for two years, but still I ain't heard none of that shit. Okay, I heard a whip and a nay nay and they had to come back to figure out what the fuck that shit was. But I ain't heard about her and this motherfucking, you know, um mystery motherfucking rap duo that her is a part of moving the fuck on uh fizz and no long story short fizz wants to talk tomorrow moving the fuck on 
Uh, so Le Cucaracha and uh, Sylvester and Tweety's Mysteries. Um, they gonna take their time. That's it. That's, that's all I can say. I'm not. I, I'm finna. I am definitely gonna treat they shit like fucking Kirk and Rashida. Until I see some good shit. That's it. I'm paying that shit smooth. Fucking does. Moving the fuck on now. Marlon Fizz. This is when the shit get good. Fizz was on here acting his ass off. I, that that boy needs an Emmy, but he ain't gonna get it because he don't love a hippie hop. So Fizz wants her. You uh, wants uh, Marla to assist him. Okay. Marla says, "Give full custody and have her pay you full child support." I'ma read this and I'ma talk because we're, we're going to disagree here, you guys. We're, we're going to disagree. Um, Marla doesn't want him to hold cameras hostage from her. That's some shit we gonna talk about. Now, Marla is trying to say, you know, um, you know, pretty much just saying that he's not as dedicated. They're not as dedicated as you know she was, and he shuts that shit down. And, you know, he pretty much told her that, you know, if you're going to be a mother, you need to support her through her demise. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to talk about that shit, too. <clears throat> Fizz, um, sees that Moniz does not have a support system. And, you know, Marla shares her fucking story. Don't nobody get no fuck about you and your motherfucking story, bitch. And I'm going to call her, bitch. Now, here's what I'm going to talk about. Because <clears throat> here's where we going to disagree about some shit. And, you know, that's the beauty of uh, me having an opinion you guys having yours. <clears throat> I am not saying that Marla needs to necessarily pick up Monisa's slack because she does not, right? Here's what I am going to say. First, let me use my family um, as a little bit of a, a talking point. I have um, <clears throat> two older brothers, a younger brother, uh, another brother that uh, just found out like a year ago that I had, but he's now deceased, so never met him. And uh, two other sisters and I, yeah, only like formerly met one, have met the other. Y'all get this shit, okay? I'm just t I'm spilling all my tea. But back to me and my brothers. <clears throat> my oldest brother has uh, four children. And like I said, of course, you know, anyone that knows me know I love my nieces and my nephew. And I'll be out here. I will put my hands on the motherfucking female for my motherfucking nieces and my motherfucking nephew. Don't get this shit twisted. I ain't about putting my hands on female. <laughs> but they like my, like I said, even though they're not my kids, they're the closest thing that I have two kids. Y'all not finna fuck with them. Trust me. Trust them. Believe you not finna fuck with them. But anyway, <clears throat> my mom has said to her boys when it comes to relationships on some real shit i don't give a fuck who you end up with just make sure that person is good to you because my mom will <clears throat> will let us live our lives however the fuck we want to but if she see that shit going left mama bear gonna step the fuck in and mama bear gonna set some shit straight right now <clears throat> My mother has four grandchildren. My mom ain't sweating the shit now. She loves her grandchildren, but my mom is not going out of her way to sit here and be a part of fucking nothing. Because mama got a life to live, too. <clears throat> Mama's still living her life. Mama ain't slowing down. I try to talk to her about, you know, I'm trying to give you grandkids. She was like, I don't, I don't give a fuck you give me grandkids or not, but that's how my mama feeling right now. Been that done, they got a t-shirt to prove it. What I'm saying is this. <clears throat> no, she does not have to sit here and pick up Monisa's slack. And if that is what he was hinting at, I don't agree with that. But what I will say is the fact that she said, well, don't hold camera toss for me. Here's my whole thing. You don't get no free motherfucking pass, but just, just because you the mother of the mother. <clears throat> okay, let me let me be motherfucking honest with y'all right motherfucking quick. I have kids. Y'all, you feel what I'm saying? First and foremost, I might have to do a separate video because I cut motherfuckers off like this with the fucking quitness and I might have to put that put that in the video and let y'all kind of understand why my philosophy behind what and I'm when I say cut people off I mean cut people off I'm talking about true family blood kin <clears throat> when I have kids on some real shit if my mom is not actively doing anything to help me and it's, uh, it's what helped me as a support system. You know, even, you know, shit, buying some motherfucking diapers here and there. You know, whatever the case may be, it's one of those things where it's just like, you're not entitled. On some real shit. And this is what we can disagree here. You're not entitled to nothing. Just, be just because you are my mother and this is my child, you are not entitled to see my damn child. You're not. My family is not entitled to see my fucking child. You are not. Now, when I <laughs> get married... My wife and I will have to talk, but her family is not entitled. My thing is, is if you're not doing shit, if you're not contributing, you ain't entitled to shit on the motherfucking real. This is Yarell speaking. You know, fuck the moniker T spelling. This is Yarell speaking. You ain't entitled to shit on the real. You feel what I'm saying? 
So the fact that she is not even willing to somewhat contribute to the edification, the raising of this child. She just want to be a great, she, just like my niece, as y'all like I said, just want to have that title of baby's mother, the mother, the birther of this child. That's all that fucking Marla wants. And she just wants that title of grandmother, but ain't doing shit grandma like. Talking about some, you can't hold a baby, don't hold the baby hostage for me. I say miss me with the bullshit. Who the fuck are you? Okay. Who the fuck are you? I'm trying to figure out what makes Marla. And if you watching Marla, yes, what makes you think that you are entitled to anything with this motherfucking child? Please let me know. I want to know. All right, again, y'all, we can agree to fucking disagree. I'm just saying. And then the fact that she wants to sit here and try to downplay both Monice and Fizz, saying y'all not dedicated. Here's the thing. Apparently, you ain't do everything right that you should have done as a motherfucking mother. Because look at your motherfucking daughter. Now, mind you, yes, you can sit here and out the way that he or she will go. And when they are older, hopefully, they will not depart. But it might happen. But apparently you ain't fucking do something right. And the fact that y'all have so much inter turmoil between you and your damn daughter, you the last motherfucker that to be sitting here giving anybody any motherfucking advice. Now, was the shit cold blooded for her to say you this is what you need to do? I've been telling you what you need to do. It is cold blooded. But at the same exact time, we have to understand it's no different if the shoes were on the other foot, which is typically how the fuck it is on the other fucking foot. You feel what I'm saying? So but my whole thing is this. I don't feel that she has been a support to Monice in any way, shape, form, or motherfucking fashion. Unless y'all can sit here and show me something different. But I want to see some motherfucking receipts. <clears throat> Better yet, again, if Marla is watching this shit, if you want to sit here and do a Google Hangout so we can talk boo-boo, we can do that shit all motherfucking day long. Because, I, I mean, I, I, I ain't got nothing but motherfucking time. Nothing but time. Moving on. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because fucking, if I'm not saying the season finale is tonight, the reunion is tomorrow or well, next week. So, it doesn't fucking matter, but I'm just saying. Moving on. <clears throat> Brandy and Max. So, she's in the studio. Max said, hated it. Child, look, y'all. Look, y'all. If that wasn't giving me men on motherfucking tease, I don't know what the fuck was. Y'all remember men on from motherfucking in living color? I was like, all right now, all right now. But all she wants is positive reinforcement somewhat understand that but again her raps wasn't that good no girls wasn't either moving on <clears throat> so now we got Moniz she's with her cousin you know like I said we all know the, you know the boy can blow the boy you know he getting his checks and shit y'all know he was on a, was it R.B. Divas he was on what show was that Hollywood Divas he was on Hollywood Divas there it is with uh, Countess Vaughn yes he was on there with her <clears throat> the boy getting them motherfucking checks alright but, um, you know, she's practicing, you know, like I said, we all know she got some pipes on it, and I really do wish that she would do something with this gift. Um, now, Moniz gets defensive, you know, with Fizz, you know, and she has like this little girl mentality because she does feel <clears throat> it's like in her mind, she feels that she gets attacked by people. <clears throat> and I'm very curious to know what is her relationship with her father? Because it seems like when she's dealing with men, she's like she either turns to a little girl in terms of I'm a shut down because you know you are a man, I'm a won't, I'm a little girl. Like she still has this little girl mentality, or it's the flip where she in when she engages a male, it's almost just like uh -huh, you know, like she's daddy's little girl. You feel what I'm saying? Like it's something about like <clears throat> like I said, Moniz, boo boo, counseling, same shit I was saying to Claudia Jordan last season of the Real Households. Counseling. Uh, what else? <clears throat> Fizz wants her to uh, have a support system. <clears throat> and, you know, she feels that no one cares. She feels attacked. She breaks down. Fizz pulls her in. I thought they was about to have, I thought they was about to fuck. That, that, you couldn't, you couldn't tell me they weren't about to sit here and have some damn, we ain't had sex in a long time sex. And, you know, says <clears throat> that he cares, you know, and now that he knows that she never had a support system. And Fizz reveals that, you know, Marla told him, take you to coat. Child's Pope. <clears throat> and Fizz tells her to figure everything out. But what I will say is the whole entire time they were there, they never got to a real resolve of why, you know, uh, they were really there. So that is all that I have. I almost 20 minutes on y'all ass. But that's it. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll be right back with the next video. Peace.